let me stand by the earlier protocols established by my comrade and friend, the national chairman. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the 10th National Delegates Congress. I wish to use this occasion to congratulate you all for your victory in the just ended constituency, regional and national youth and women conferences. It is my hope that you will constitute a formidable team that will work seamlessly to enable the NDC recapture power from this inept, clueless, corrupt, and incompetent MPP government. As you are aware, of the current national executives of our party will end in a jiffy as our four-year term mandate is exhausted. Since the last Congress, however, many notable comrades of the party, among others, have passed on. He, among them, is the founding father of this party, His Excellency, former President Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins. Other departed party faithfuls include Comrade Ama Benyuado, Captain Kojo Chikata, Dr. Nguyen Madonko, Jifa Ativo, Professor Kwasiboche, and many others, which time will not permit me to mention individually. At the appropriate time, when the former president mounts the podium, he would entreat of you to observe some silence in commemoration of these gallant warriors. Notable events that have occurred during the period under report include the presidential and parliamentary primaries of our great party. We had very successful presidential and parliamentary primaries prior to the 20 elections. And for the first time in the history of our party, we had seven stalwarts contesting the presidential primaries. The good news, the party was robust and measures to ensure that the tensions normally characterize presidential primaries, especially one with this huge, with this large number of aspirants and their supporters were reduced to the barest minimum. Fast forward to 2020. We had a general election that was historic by all. Firstly, the two major political parties, PC and PP, split the seats in parliament down with 137 seats each, giving the its first hung parliament. Secondly, and against all odds, the NDC annexed the speakership of parliament a feat very rare in contemporary African politics. Thirdly, Ghana experienced the most bizarre elections since the inception of the Fourth Republic in 1993. In the 2020 general elections, the NDC faced a blatantly partisan umpire, the Electoral Commission. As it wasn't enough, we had a judiciary that drew common sense, facts and logic, and caution to the wind, and consequently denied the people of Ghana the opportunity to hold the chairperson of the Electoral Commission to account for her stewardship as the sole returning officer of the presidential elections. 
Fourthly, and not the least of all, Ghana witnessed the most violent elections, reminiscent of other violent elections in countries like Kenya, Egypt, Sudan, and elsewhere. Several lives were lost, with many more also maimed. But for the grace of God, the situation in the immediate aftermath of the 2020 elections could have degenerated into civil strife and dissension. To show to Ghanaians and the entire world the irregularities and infractions with the 2020 general elections, deliberately orchestrated by the Electoral Commission with the connivance of the new patriotic party. Our party went to the Supreme Court to challenge the presidential results. We lost the case in the Judicial Court, but won in the Court of Public Opinion. The NDC, dissatisfied with the activities of the Electoral Commission, decided to the IPAC meetings which have been reduced to a mere rubber stamping of decisions that have been taken already by the Electoral Commission. The party subsequently proposed electoral reforms to the Electoral Commission, the discussion, adoption, and adoption of which would form the basis of our return to the IPAC meetings. Unfortunately, the Electoral Commission treated this proposal and remained adamant and intransigent. Organizations including the National Peace Council and the diplomatic community have been holding with the EC to address the issues raised by NDC to enable it return to IPAC meetings. But so far, all of these efforts have fallen into the deaf ears of the Commission. In the belief that the 2020 elections were rigged and to prevent same from happening in subsequent elections, the party organized a series of retreats for regional and national executives as well as the minority caucus in parliament, culminating in the retreat at the Serene Volta Hotel in the Volta region. The occasion which was well attended allowed each regional executive committee to give account of the elections they supervised in their respective region. There were so many revelations and confirmation of issues that the party already knew of. These helped and will continue to help the party in its subsequent orientation and training programs for its executives at all levels of the party. Indeed, our outreach programs held in the various regions were partly as a result of feedback gathered from these retreats. As part of its reorganization program, the party organized outreach programs in the various regions, whose outcome largely helped in the drafting of guidelines for the party's reorganizational roadmap. Internal elections. In preparation towards the next general elections in 2024, the party organized largely successful elections at the various levels of our party. And I wish to report that for the first time in the history of this party, deployment of personnel from the national level and also from the top levels of regions sent to branches to reorganize the very base of the NDC party, the branch level. Again, since this party 
has considered Ashanti and Eastern region as the difficult areas of the party in terms of our elections. We gave special attention to this reorganization in the two regions. We had to deploy officers from all over the country and national level to descend in Ashanti and Eastern region to the base of the party and help install the branches of the party, which will position us to win the next elections. Mr. Chairman, comrades, ladies and gentlemen, let me use this opportunity to commend our caucus in Parliament for a very laborious and tremendous Our caucus has so far acquitted itself creditably. Through its various press conferences and contributions in Parliament, our caucus has exposed and continues to expose the MPP's ineptitude, corruption, and mismanagement of the economy, which has led to our current hardship and predicament. Finally, comrades, I wish to take this opportunity to formally inform Congress that the NDC has shot another great feat of global significance. As you are all aware, I have been the Vice President of Socialist International for the past six years. The Secretary General's position of the SI was due for re-election this year. She presented a young, vibrant, motivated, and talented lawyer and party activist, Comrade Benedicta Lassie, as a candidate for the position. The party mounted a vigorous lobby and campaign for this young lady, which eventually landed her the position of Secretary General of the Socialist International. This makes her the first African to occupy that prestigious position, the first female to occupy that prestigious position, and the youngest Secretary General of Socialist International over a century's existence. Ladies and gentlemen, put up applause for Comrade Benedicta Lassie. In sum, the NDC has made a lot of progress over the last four years, and I am optimistic that we are poised to win the 2024 general elections. But we cannot win the 2024 general elections with a divided front. I would therefore plead with all party members, especially aspirants and their supporters, to make a conscious effort to shun all activities and conducts that have a potential to break our front and to embrace the ingredients of peace, unity, solidarity, and stability. I thank you all for your attention, and may God bless our homeland, Ghana. Long live the National Democratic Congress, and long live Mother Ghana. Hey! Hey! Hey!